All right. Hello, Algebra 2 class. It is 9.20 p.m. This is my last video, and then I get to go home and relax until I come back on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, and then teach you guys um, some more math. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to continue using this paper that you would have received last time you were in class. Um, but now we're going to be covering day two material. So as I had mentioned in the previous video, we're going to focus today on talking about factor by grouping. And then we're going to use those ideas for this second page right here. OK, um, let's start off by talking over uh, the long way of uh, factoring by grouping, meaning not the long way, but the steps they're going to be very in depth and then on that second page we're going to abbreviate or we're going to make it um, kind of shortened um, but let's talk about factoring by grouping so for factoring by grouping um, you can use this if your polynomial so if polynomial has four terms if it has four terms then you can do factor by grouping okay the first step is going to be to group the first two terms and the last two terms, okay? Our second step is going to be to factor out the GCFs. Our third step will be to rewrite by grouping the GCFs. Um, and that's only, again, if the terms in the parentheses are the same. Parentheses, that should be parentheses. It doesn't look like parentheses, but it is. Parentheses are the same. And then the last step, so number four, is to check for any other special patterns once we've factored by grouping, okay? I'm gonna zoom this out. Um, these, three steps, at least the first three steps, they're actually very similar to the process that we took um, for the last problem for day one, okay? The only thing is that we get to skip the X method for factor by grouping, and we get to go straight into a situation where we have four terms um, and we group them in parentheses and then divide out that GCF from each group. And once we do that, we check to see if they're the same, and then we rewrite it. So um, very similar process, but now we're dealing with um, specifically terms that are of different uh, powers. So if you notice right here, these are the same powers, but in the problems that we're going to be dealing with today, um, there'll be different powers, yet same general process. So let's look at this second page right here. And I'm going to have us write the four steps um, in a simplified version. So if we are going to factor by grouping, the simplified version would be to um, group them up. The second step would be to factor out the GCFs. Our third step would be to rewrite. And our last step, which is our fourth step, would be to um, look for special patterns. And if there are special patterns, then, I mean, we got to deal with them with the special pattern formula, right? So this these four steps are the abbreviated version of 
these in-depth ones that we talk or that we wrote at the front of the page. Okay. So let's go through the first process here for example one. First step is to group them up. So I'm going to group up the first terms and the last terms. Okay. Second step, factor out the GCF. Well, the GCF for this first group is going to be x squared. They both have an x squared in common. So if I were to factor that out, what would I be left with? Well, I would be left with 2x minus 1. And if I were to then, let me do this in a different color. I'm doing a purple. If I were to factor out um, something in, that they have in common, in this case, it would be 3. Then I would have plus 3, and then I'd be left with 2x minus 1. How, again, do I check to see if my work is good? Oh, it looks like it froze. So sorry, y'all. Um, how, do, how, again, do I check to see if I did this correctly. Well, I want to look within my parentheses. If I have that there the same, then I it I can actually factor by grouping. And then I would move on to my third step, which is to rewrite it. What do I mean by rewriting? Is that I would group these two together. So this would end up being 2x minus 1. So that would kind of go in this section. And I would combine the GCFs. So I would write 2x, and then since it's a positive 3, I would put, um, not 2x, sorry, x squared. Ugh. x squared plus 3. Okay. Um, so then from this point, I would check, well, do I have any special patterns? Because that's my fourth step. Do I have any special patterns? Here I see a square, but if I look at that 3, that Three is not a perfect square, so this is actually as simplified as it can be for this one. It's not factorable. And then if I look at this one too, well, that's not a perfect square. That's not a perfect cube. It's not a trinomial. So this one, we can't factor it as well anymore. So this would be our final answer. Okay. Let's move on to this second problem. Same idea. First step is to group them up. So we'll group it up. Okay. Once I group it up, I need to divide out the GCF. What do these two have in common? They have an x uh, squared in common. So I would write x squared. And then what's, the, what's that simplified? Well, it would be 3x minus 1. Now I'm going to move on to that other set of parentheses. So I would divide out a GCF. What do they have in common? They have a 5 in common. So I would put plus 5 because it's positive in this case. And then what's that simplify? That fraction is going to give me 3x. That fraction will give me 1. So now I need to verify. Do these look the same? Yes. So since they look the same, I'm able to uh, rewrite. That's my third step, right? So I'm going to rewrite. I'll write it as x squared plus 5. Those are my GCFs that are being combined. And my 3x minus 1. So those were the ones that were the same. They're now being combined as 1 as well. Okay. Oops. Okay. Now I need to check again to see if there's any special patterns. So let me look at this piece. If it were to be anything, it would need to be perfect square. But um, the difference of perfect squares, my bad. This is not subtraction, though. That's not a perfect square. So that's not factorable. If I were to look over here, that 3x minus 1. Well, that's linear. It doesn't have any perfect squares. It's not a trinomial. Um, it's only a binomial. So this is also not factorable as well, which means this is my finalized answer. Let's move on to third problemo. Our third problemo, we gotta do the same general process. Okay. Oh, I should probably be putting it around this. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, let me be more specific. There we go. 
you should be around the, the signs as well, okay? The reason why is because of a situation like what we're going to come across right now. It needs to be over all of the signs. Okay, so let's factor out a GCF. They have an 8 in common for sure. What else do they have in common? They have an X, but they have an X cubed in common. So I can factor out 8X cubed from that first um, set within the parentheses. This should give me X plus 2. Yeah, x plus 2. Ooh, I forgot the x cubed. My bad. So we have 8x cubed times x plus 2. Now we're going to move on to this other side. What can I divide it by? Um, well, here's a hint. So since I have a positive in, within my parentheses, if I want to make this a positive as well, I actually need to divide out some negative value. That way, all the terms will be positive within inside within it okay so i know i need to divide it by something negative but what else do they have in common 27 and 54 they actually have a 27 in common 54 goes into 27 two times so we're going to have negative 27 is equal to x plus 2 okay i checked to see if these are the same they are, in fact, the same. So I'm able to rewrite. I would rewrite it as x, 8x cubed minus 27 times x plus 2. Okay. Now I need to check to see if um, there are any special patterns. So let me look right here. Um, okay, I'm seeing something. I'm seeing an 8. An 8 is actually a cube because it's 2 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. That x cubed is also a cube because x times x times x equals x cubed. What about that 27? That 27 is also a a, um, a perfect cube, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a difference of cube in this case, okay? Difference of cube. We figure that out because we have a subtraction sign. And all of the terms, um, they are cubes. So off to the side, I'm going to do the work of that 8x cubed minus 27. Now, we need to remember that formula. That formula, you should be able to look back at the, the front page. Difference of cubes, that is that second piece right here. Okay, we're going to use that formula for our problem below. Okay. In order to do this, I need to know what my a is and what my b value is. What value, when I cube it, is going to give me 8x cubed? The answer should be 2x. What value, when I cube it, should give me 27? Your answer should be 3. So now let's use that um, difference of cubes formula to set up my factored polynomial. So this should end up actually being 2x minus 3 times, and then here's where the long one comes in. So 2x squared plus 3 times 2x plus Three x, I mean, just three, three uh, squared, not cubed squared. Okay. If I were to simplify this, I'd get two x minus three times this is four x squared plus six x plus nine. Okay. So this, I'm going to swap it out with that. So this should end up giving me 2x minus 3, or x squared plus 6x plus 9. And I'm going to bring down that x plus 2. From here, I need to check once more. Is that 2x minus 3, can it be factored out more? The answer is no, it can't. Okay. What about that 4 
x squared plus 6x plus 9. You'll end up finding the answer is no for this one as well. You could double check, but you would need to use split the middle method and you need to use the x method. And you'd quickly find that with the x method, you can't find an answer for it, okay? And then that x plus 2, it's also not factorable as well. So this is my final answer. I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our next problem. Same four steps. Group them. Divide out the GCF. And then continue from there. So if I were to divide up the GCF, they have an x squared in common. And I should probably do this the same color. Let me do this in purple. There we go. Um, so if I were to write this, it would be x squared. That is equal to 3x plus 1. And then on this side right here, I can divide out. And if this is going to be a positive, right, I want it to be a positive within the inside of here, I would need to divide out a negative, so it should be a negative something. They have a negative 4 in common. So I'd end up with negative 4 times. If I were to divide these two, that would give me 3x. If I divide those two, it gives me a positive 1. I check to see if these are the same, which they are in fact, so I can rewrite it x squared minus 4 times 3x plus 1. Now I need to check for special patterns. If I look at this one, is this a special pattern? The answer is yes. It is a difference of squares. A difference of squares. So that formula would be the very first one right here in the special pattern section. But I need to know what my, sorry, I need to know what my A and my B are, okay? So let's go through the process of trying to find what my A and B are for this problem. My A would be, well, what, when I multiply it, or when I square it, my bad, is going to give me X, well, X. X is gonna give me, X squared is going to give me X squared. <laughs> then I look at B. What value when I square it is going to give me 4? That's 2. So if I were to rewrite this, I could rewrite it as X minus 2 times X plus 2. This is the difference of squares formula. Times, because I'm bringing this piece down, 3X plus 1. If you look... There's nothing that can be done to factor it out more. So this is my final answer. Two more problems and then we're done -zo for today's lesson. We're repeating the same thing over and over again. So I'm hoping that it's starting to feel less intimidating. If not, it's practice that's going to make you feel more comfortable with it. Okay. Um, and again, you guys are always able to rewatch these videos if you need to, to go at a slower pace. Okay. All right, so I need to divide out a GCF. It looks like they both have a two in common for sure and an X cubed, okay? And then, um, let's see. For this one, oh, my bad. I actually forgot one step. Oh, man, okay. Thing that I've been forgetting with all these problems <laughs> is to check and see if there's a GCF. Um, in all of the circumstances, we actually didn't have a GCF outside of um, one. So for all of these problems, the GCF is all one. Um, this bottom one is actually the first time around that our GCF is going to be different. So technically I should have been telling you guys, oh, check for GCF and then pull out the GCF first before doing anything else. But up until this point, we didn't need to do that step. So I apologize, but the GCF in this circumstance is actually two. So we're gonna pull out a two here from each, each term. So this will end up being 
x to the fourth power, if I divide out a 2 from this one, so that would be negative 2x cubed. If I divided a 2 from this one, it would be plus x. If I divide out a 2 from this one, it would be negative 2. Okay, so that's my bad again. I should have um, I should have been telling you guys to look for the GCF first before doing factor by grouping. Okay, so now we can factor by grouping. Um, and we go through that process. So here I would have that they have an x cubed in common. And they have nothing in common here outside of a GCF of 1. So I could rewrite this as 2 times. Here I'll have, um, let me do this in purple actually. So x cubed. When whatever is remaining here, so x to the fourth power divided by x to the third, that should be x. This right here, if I divide it, it should be leaving me with 2. Then I'll divide out that 1. And then I'll end up with x minus 2. Conveniently, these are the same. So because they are the same, we can go ahead and um, rewrite it. So I'd have 2 times the GCFs and the terms that repeated themselves that were the same, okay? Now we need to check again. Here, is that a, uh, is that a special pattern? We are in fact going to have that it's a special pattern. The question is what type of special pattern are we dealing with? I have a plus sign. I have a cute. That means that I'm dealing with a sum of cubes. Okay, so where is that? That should be this last piece, sum of cubes. That's this formula right here, sum of cubes. So then let me go ahead and actually um, off to the side, I should probably do my work for this. Oof. I'm running out of space. Probably should have drawn it somewhere else. But let me draw this really small. So x cubed plus 1. For that, it should be an a value of x because x, when you cube it, it gives you x squared. And that b, right, would be 1 cubed. So if I were to use that formula that's on my front page, I should end up with the following. I should end up with, um, I should end up with x plus 1. And then the other parentheses, I should have x squared minus 1 times x, which is just going to be x, and then plus 1 squared, which is just going to be 1, okay? So this piece right here, I'm going to replace it with that sum of squares. So I'll end up with the following, 2 x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 times x minus 2. Okay. Now I check, is this factorable? It is, in fact, factorable. I mean, it isn't, in fact, factorable. I do the same thing over here. So this is not factorable. If you were to try to do the math here, you'd find that that is also not, in fact, factorable. And this last one is not factorable. So my final answer whew, is going to be that big old thing. Okay. Last problem, and then we're done. Okay. So what am I dealing with here? Well, if I look at this, look at that, that kind of looks like 
um, a, it looks like a difference of squares, um, where I would have that my a value. So here, let me label it difference of squares. But this is a tricky one, okay? Uh, because my a would have to be what? What piece, when I square it, is going to give me x to the fourth power, x to the second power. So that's the tricky part, okay? Um, then our b value, well, what value when I square it is going to give me 16? That one's not too bad. That one should be 4. So if I were to rewrite this using the difference of squares formula, which again is at the very top right here, difference of squares, if I were to use that formula, I would end up getting, let's see, x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. I need to check to see if there are any more special patterns. And in fact, we're going to find that that's a special pattern. This one isn't, though, because there's no sum of perfect squares. There's only a difference of perfect squares. So this is not factorable. But this one is. This, this first one is going to be, again, a, a second line of difference of squares. So now I need to identify what my new A value is going to be for this one and what my new b value is going to be. So what value when I squared is going to give me x squared? Well, x is. And what value, or what, yeah, what value is going to give me four when I square it? Well, that's two. So now I can rewrite this as x minus two. This is again, is it's us using the formula, okay? So x minus two, x plus two, so that's just the difference of squares formula times that one that's not factorable. We just brought it down, okay? Now, if we were to check this, we know that this is still not factorable, and then these are no longer factorable as well. So we are donezo. I would like to give a friendly reminder that you guys will be having a quiz um, on the information that we would have covered these two days. So this page right here, you guys filling out this page is important because uh, for that quiz, it will be open note. And if you don't have this paper, um, it's going to be harder for you to remember or for you to have examples to look back at to help you out with that quiz. So I highly suggest that you um, take some time to fill out your paper. Remember, you can always access this video at a later time. Um, if you need to go back and fill in some spots where you got lost or you fell behind, okay? Alrighty, I will see you guys soon. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.